So 2020 has not been a good year for the majority of people in one way or another, not just in total, but uh, whether you got the COVID or somebody you know got the COVID or the political stuff wore on you. I think if it didn't wear on you, I'm worried about you. Uh, all of that, the economy, the ups and downs, shutdowns, lockdowns, all of it. 2020 has been a freaking year. Uh, one thing that's not going to make the media, though, you need to check on your gun people friends. Your people that, well, you're probably one of those people if you're watching this video, but uh, people like you and me, right? People that are into guns. We like shooting. It's more than just, uh, hey, I get the deer rifle out once a year type thing. People that enjoy shooting. Uh, we're not okay. 2020 has been a year, right? Uh, if you're like me, you've probably had a lot of people asking for a lot of advice. And that's a good thing, and that's fine, and I'm glad to help people out. But in some ways, 2020 has been a ringer. So we're going to go through some of the top things that I have heard in 2020 as a gun person uh, that have irritated me a little bit, or have grown to irritate me. Maybe they didn't the first five or ten times that I heard it or got asked. Chances are they might have irritated you too. So... If any of these resonate, drop in the comment your story pertaining to that comment and uh, funniest one is going to get pinned. So, without further ado, here's the top things that gun people are tired of hearing in 2020. First one's a bit of a caveat situation. It's the situation where somebody comes up, hey, what do you recommend? What would be your picks for whatever? Rifle, pistol, shotgun, ammo, whatever. We're going to take your time up. We're going to ask you about your recommendations. We're going to ask you to justify those recommendations potentially, but why do you recommend it? And that's fine. Where this one gets its little asterisk mark or footnote is when that person turns around and does everything that you didn't tell them. It took up all your time. They probably even agreed with you in the message or in the conversation in person. You gave them really good fact-based, evidence-based, experience-based recommendations. And then they turned around and was like, yeah, F that, I'm not doing that. We call those people assholes. They ask the question, they behave like an asshole. Asshole, it's, it's pretty obvious. If you're watching this with your kids, sorry, <laughs> but that's going to be number one. That one is annoying. Now, I understand things like budget constraints and things like that come up, which is why I typically, if I'm going to be giving that kind of advice, I will kind of gently imply what the budget is because you could go with anything from a CZ P10C, for example, that I paid $400 for up to a, yeah, this most expensive one I have out, Breda M9A3, normally near a thousand. If you get it much lower than that, you got a good deal, but near a thousand dollars for that. So, Again, I understand if uh, affordability of whatever the recommendation was is the issue, that's fine. But normally, you know, hey, what caliber do you recommend for a carry gun? Well, I like a 9mm. Why do you like a 9mm? Well, uh, not really applicable in 2020. Ease of finding ammo, cost of ammo. You see where this is going. Uh, the ease of shooting, it's not going to be super hard to learn to control a 9mm. Uh, things like that you get more practice in. And it's got decent enough ballistics to do the job of a defensive caliber. Oh, okay, great. I think that, yeah, that, that makes sense. And then they turn around and buy a 45 gap or 460 Smith & Wesson. Whatever. You know where this is going. I'm sure everybody has had this experience at some point. Next. And this one hopefully is going to be 2020 specific. Hopefully we never deal with this again. Hey, man, let me get some ammo. I know you've got ammo. Let me get some ammo. Let me, let me buy it from you. I'll, I'll, I'll pay you whatever you paid for it. See, that implies two things. That implies that I buy stuff needlessly uh, that I don't plan on using. Number two, the assumption is that I'm just going to give it to you. You obviously are asking this question because it's hard to find or prices have gone up. So it's slightly disrespectful to assume that I'm just going to give you some ammo um, or sell you some ammo at the price I paid for it when all that has gone up drastically. Now, there are a couple exceptions to this. Uh, family, if family is in a situation where maybe they're not gun people, I've got members of my own family that admittedly aren't. 
I will try to help people out. I will try to spot them a little bit of ammo. I really don't take money for it. Um, and no, no, somebody's going to try to say we're related in the comments and that they need help. Don't believe it. <laughs> but that sort of situation, you know, doing a favor uh, is a lot different than just assuming that somebody is going to spot you, especially if you have been vocal with this person in the past about, hey, man, you should be getting a little bit more prepared. You know, this is a good buddy. Maybe you guys have been out to the range and... Uh, the dude goes to the range, buys 50 rounds, and that, that's it. That's all the ammo he wants. He does no interest in keeping ammo back or things like that. And you've tried to counsel him on that. And now he's going to come running to you. Now, you make hay when the sun shines. Uh, that sort of thing. So that is one of those things the first couple times in 2020. It was like, yeah, okay. By the end of 2020, I, can't, I, can't, I need a beer. <laughs> I wasn't joking at all. But anyway, someone's going to judge me on my beer choice. Uh, the next one is going to be, no one is coming for your guns. I just realized this is like the first time I've had alcohol on camera. 2020, you're a first perfect video topic for me to do this. So yeah, drink responsibly and all that. Um, no one's coming for your guns. No, I don't think Johnny Deputy is marching down here to my door to take my guns. But this so overused line about nobody's coming for your guns when we keep having legislation proposed and uh, attempted to do just that or you have the ATF going on some wild tangent trying to redefine uh, things that it's previously said were okay this that and the other yes people are coming for our guns um, if you doubt that go to the Biden Harris campaign website yeah I'll link to the video where I explain exactly how Biden feels about your and I second amendment rights but yeah, that one's getting really overused, especially in 2020. Pretty much every time there's a presidential election or, or politics in general. That one's not 2020 specific. Often followed on the nobody's coming for your guns if, if it turns into a debate and you start going over, hey, they want to ban this, this, and this. Normally AR-15, semi-autos, anything holding more than 10 rounds. You get followed up with, you don't need dot, 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 whatever they decide to go with. Um, that's getting really freaking old, especially in 2020, right? This year, uh, you know, nobody thought we were going to need face diapers. Uh, and nobody thought that we were going to need to stock up on toilet paper. Or at least that buying toilet paper would even be a concern. So the crystal ball approach to self-defense where you don't need... Uh, it's awful arrogant to assume that any of us can predict the future, right? Good or bad. So, uh, when we have had a year with economic craziness, we've had a year with, uh, depending on what side of the fence you fall on, uh, police brutality or civil unrest. I hate the term civil unrest. Call it what it is. It was rioting. Um, whether or not you believe that was justified or there's an underlying issue that motivated that, that's a whole different conversation we're not going to do today. But the state of affairs is the same, right? We had cities burning, American cities burning. We had uh, business owners having their businesses destroyed. We had violence. We had political violence. Uh, we are seeing an uptick in the occurrences of these things. So to sit there and say that, uh, I'll go with low-hanging fruit, you don't need an AR-15 with a 30-round mag. No, today I, I haven't yet, and the day's coming to a close, so hopefully I don't. Uh, but who's to say that I don't? And it's a lot easier to go into something, uh, a situation with what you need, than to make the arrogant assumption that you won't need it and don't have it, and you are now using that time to scramble and find what you need. Don't believe me? Ask all the new gun owners who can't find ammo to practice with right now. Next. This one's going to follow the first one, the whole asshole scenario, but more on methods instead of equipment, right? We covered, hey, what's the best caliber, what's the best holster, what's the best gun? Uh, and then that person just makes a wild hair decision and does something completely different, completely discounting and negating the time that you spent with that person. Um, this one is going to be, and maybe you guys don't deal with it as much. I am not a great shooter. I'll be the first to admit that. I shoot okay. I shoot better than... Most people that I have been around, and I shoot worse than a lot of other people um, that you guys may or may not have seen on YouTube or just in general. Uh, shooting is one of those things that you have to practice to get good at. I learned that over the last couple years where I've been shooting more. 
So when somebody says, oh, I want to shoot like you, well, first of all, it's not a very high bar. <laughs> Second of all, you can't. You just need to do X, Y, and Z, right? Dry fire, you need to work on your uh, draw, your presentation, your trigger control. You need to do some live fire to get those rapid fire shots because there are some things that dry fire just can't do. You can't simulate recoil with dry fire very well. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure there may be a gadget out there somewhere that can, but um, it's not the same, right? I think everybody agrees live fire, dry fire, it's not the same. So there are things that you have to do in order to improve your skill set. These are things that I try to do in my daily life because, like I said, the bar where I'm at is not all that high and I still want to get a lot better. Um, so when you give people pointers, hey, you should try doing this or maybe you should try doing this, um, and then they negate that. They don't practice and they're like, well, I tried it once and it didn't work. You know, you know I'm sure Mike Tyson didn't get in a boxing ring one time and achieve the level that he is, was at at his prime. Uh, not that I am the Mike Tyson of shooting, because I am not. I'm kind of like, I'm kind of like Helen Keller on acid when it comes to shooting. But there is that. So people will ask for tips. People will ask for pointers to get better at shooting. Employ none of it, and then complain when they don't get any better. And I'm sure this carries over with a lot of other topics, uh, whether that's working out, something I also need to be doing, or whatever. But that whole mindset of I am going to take up your time. Maybe because I'm bored, maybe because I want to feel important, um, whatever. Not that you get important from talking to me, but um, whatever the reason is, I'm going to take up your time, do nothing that you recommend, and then complain about the outcome. Uh, that's getting really old. That's going to sum it up for my top list of things that a lot of gun owners, and this isn't just me, these are other people I've heard from as well, there's things that we're tired of hearing in 2020. Now, fortunately, 2020 is almost over, which means 2021 is coming, which means it's time for new year, new me, better conversations all the way around. If you ask for advice, at least have a valid reason for not taking said advice when you're done and moving forward. Hopefully the ammo will come back. Prices will come back down. I really liked when I started reloading and I would walk in and there would just be primers and you could pick what you wanted, different brands, however much you wanted, no limit. Um, that's kind of my thing right now. It's like I have a lot of brass. I can't reload. So uh, that's another thing. If guys are like seasoned reloaders, I'm sure you're tired of hearing where are the primers from people like me. <laughs> so guys, this is just a funny video. Uh, hopefully didn't make anybody too mad. But stay safe. Keep shooting if you can. Keep working on your dry fire if you can't. It really does make a difference. I challenge anybody that doubts that. Do some dry fire for a week. Go to the range next time you're out and see if your results improve. And when I say do some dry fire, take 15 minutes. 15 minutes out of your day. Work on your draw, your presentation, and your trigger control. Work on all of that 15 minutes a day, one week or more. And the next time you go out and do live fire, run through that same scenario. Or if you can't draw from a holster at your range, come from a low ready or, or whatever you're allowed to do. And push that gun out and see if you haven't noticed an improvement. I'm willing to bet that if you take the dry fire seriously, you will notice an improvement at the range. It's one of those things you got to invest to get the payoff. So guys, stay safe. I'll see you next time.